Ladies and gents, welcome back to the workshop. We are engraving side A on our upper guard of a Viking sword. I'm completely fresh to trying to engrave and trying to inlay. This is brand new to me, so it's a pleasure to bring you along for the journey, and I hope you enjoy because we're about to take to our freshly made onglet graver with a 35 degree heel. Cut some undercuts, ready for us to inlay some gold. As it stands, that onglet graver that we made yesterday has undercut this scroll all the way until here. Now, as I get into the very tip of it, that's where we get into difficulty. That's where Lane Zulk's advice of using a point punch tool is gonna come in handy. My understanding of what it is that I need to do is I need to take this punch tool and I need to use this to make an undercut towards the tip of the scroll like this, and then I can angle it to punch in an undercut around the perimeter of that final little bit. The tips of the scroll is gonna end up about there. I'll then use this to undercut the final tiny little bits that we need to do. So here we go. I reckon that'll do. Let me show you where I've messed up on this though. You'll see right here, as we're flattening that, oh no, this was with the onglet. As I was undercutting this, I let that trail run off. And so when we fill that with gold, there's gonna be a big old ugly gold spot here that doesn't follow the line of the scroll too well at all and doesn't follow the line of this inside of the uh, of the beast. Much to improve, but much else to do. It's time to continue undercutting up the piece. Here we go. The amount of time that I have spent engraving this, ready for its inlay, one side of our upper guard. The amount of time that I've spent on that tells a foreboding tale as to what the next seven days of my life are gonna look like. They're gonna look a lot like, look a lot like this. This has been engraved. It has been undercut. And I'm gonna degrease it, give it a wipe. We're gonna blow it out. And with that, this side is ready for inlay. You all remember that a few days ago I tried to make a draw plate. <laughs> I ended up deciding I needed to buy one. I just ordered the draw plate. It has arrived. We've got an actual draw plate, which means that we can change the diameter of our wire from the one millimeter I do have to the 0.7 millimeters that I think I need to fill the groove here that we cut with a wider graver than we cut the inside. These tongs also arrived. I bought the tongs because I figured they would be really special and helpful for drawing the wire. You know, they're wire drawing tongs. And these are the most interesting looking pieces of work that I've seen ever. Gotta love that nice eighth inch thick coat of paint. That's a really nice piece of work. Wow, my workshop is a complete mess. I'm sure I once made a video about tidying up every day. We'll lock it in the vise. We'll take some of our gold wire. I'm gonna make a guesstimate of how much I might need. I'm sure I don't need this much, especially once we thin it down, but we've then got to thin down one end so it pokes through the draw plate. Oh wait, I could hammer it. I really wish I had an anvil. It's got a little taper to it. That'll work. And with a one, two, we just drew wire. <gasps> and it's getting longer! And it's warm! That's so cool! Let's do one more. Wow! That's amazing! It's now 0 0.85 millimeters. Let's anneal it. What are the odds I make a puddle? Oh. Okay. Need to thin it down some more. Looks like it needs to be annealed. Yep, it doesn't like that. This now measures 0.72 millimeters, and it looks like it's just about perfect for our groove. So I'll terrifiedly anneal it. Please don't melt, please don't melt. Please don't melt, please don't melt. I think that'll do. The wire's soft. This is clean, means it's time to start. I'm gonna start with the border.
got the gold border, as you've already seen, and I started filling out the middle. Now, when I made my test silver inlay a few episodes, you'll remember that. When I did that silver inlay, I used a 0.5 millimeter flat graver to cut those lines, and I used 0.5 millimeter silver wire to fill them in, and it all looked good. And so here, I used a 0.5 millimeter flat graver to cut our lines, but I think I went a little deeper than I did on the silver inlay, which means that there is more space to have to fill, and I regret to inform you that I got lazy, and even after seeing that the gold didn't fill this area right here at the back of the scroll, I continued trying to fill the rest of it, which is ridiculous. So what I need to do is I need to pluck out the gold out of there, and then I need to make some more intermediary size wire, I'm gonna probably say 0.6 or 0.7 millimeter wire, to fill in all of these central portions, on the assumption that just like that area, here, half millimeter gold wire isn't gonna fit the groove that I've now created. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little uh, poking tool and see if we can get in there and pluck out our gold. For those of you that are curious, yes, I'm trying to save every bit of gold I can. However, I've dropped more on the floor that I can't find than I'd care to admit. Nice one. That's a beautiful scratch. You can tell inlay is stunningly strong. It's taking an incredible amount of force to try and pull this out. Yes! Aha! Success. Beautiful. Look at that. I'll try and see if I can burnish out the scratch with a round-ended punch. Okay, now I need to prep the ends of the golds for the following bits of inlay. Oh no, I need to make some more gold. We'll give it a measure with a feeler gauge. We'll try 0 0.6 millimeters. <laughs> 0 0.6 mil! <laughs> So a big problem I had last night when I was putting this gold in there is I dropped a lot of gold. Way more gold than I'd like to drop. Um, and having a little skirt like this out of tape is getting in the way of the camera. I also had some up here. It makes the angles difficult. So we're thinking, what can we use as a skirt to catch the gold? And we're also thinking that we're really kind of hungry. <gasps> a baking tray. And would you look at that, I've got a baking tray. And we stick the baking tray on here and it catches all of the gold that I'm gonna drop. We've got ourselves a gold catcher. The gold is in! It's taken forever. But the gold is in, and I think it's, I think it's gone all right. So it means that the next step now is I need to take some flat gravers, and I want to chisel off as much of the gold as I can without scratching up the steel too badly, uh, too much more than I already have, so that I can then take those gold chips, put them in the baggie, and eventually have some gold saved up that I can remelt down and remake into wire. Ooh, this is exciting. Back under the optimizers I go. Got it chiseled. It's now time to stone it and sand it. Holy moly. <gasps> this is unbelievable. How have I done that? That 
look so much better than the silver inlay that I did a few days ago. It's by no means perfect. There are some spots where the steel is dented down and you know, I haven't quite got through them with the stone, but I'm just seriously impressed with how much improvement there was with this in the gold. And despite the flaws, I'm very proud to have got this far because like I put every single bit of heart and soul into this side so far. And I know that as I go on, it is only gonna improve, only gonna improve. And so what is the next step? The next step, well, I thought it'd be very smart to commit to uh, deciding to do background removal. What is background removal? Well, in order to create a better contrast between our actual beast and, uh, and the steel and the gold, you work away the background with chisels and with a burr, and then you stipple it with a point on a hammer action, uh, hammer action hand piece. And what that does is it captures the light and it gives a darkness to this area. You can then also fill that material with, a, uh, with paint. Here, that's just actually a little bit of oil that I rubbed on there that gives it that darker look. And it just looks really beautiful, but easy to make mistakes. On this, I slipped several times with the burr. This was a test piece with sterling silver. This is a real piece with gold, hundreds of pounds of gold, and like four days of my life. So I don't want to slip. So how am I going to do this? I think the plan is as fo- Ooh! Fun little side note. Sideline. You remember you heard me talking about Lane Zulki. He is a master engraver who has been giving me a few great little bits of tips, told me the places on the internet to look, to learn, and uh, he's been just incredibly helpful and he has just started a YouTube channel and his first video on his YouTube channel was showing how to engrave and inlay my touch mark. And so I'm very grateful for that. Thank you, Lane, for making that video. And I hope that if you guys are interested in learning more about engraving, you subscribe to his channel. Anyway, some of the things that I've learned there are going to be very helpful as we progress forwards. And the first thing that I want to do, I think this makes sense, is I want to take a square graver and I want to trace an outline just around the inside of the gold, leaving just a sliver of steel to keep the gold locked in. I'm going to make that outline with the square graver and then I think we're gonna do the bulk of the background removal with a burr. That's the plan. We'll see if it works. I've got the lines for the background cut in. It's now time to start removing the background and my plan is to see what I prefer, whether I prefer using a chisel or whether I prefer using a teeny tiny, teeny weeny 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 little ball burr. This is what a half millimeter, 0.5 millimeter, that's about 20 thou ball burr looks like. What a tiny thing. This will go in here. This will go to tighten. These are the chisels I'll be using unless I need to make up another thinner one. Let's see what we prefer. We'll start with the chisel. Twenty-four minutes, fifty-nine seconds. Sixteen minutes, fifty-three seconds. hogged out. 
<laughs> and I'm tired. Wow, am I tired. And wow, did this take a long time. This episode right here, 24 and a half hours of work. Thursday, Friday is now Saturday at 11.30 in the morning. Wow, did I bite off a huge chunk of work by deciding to do this. But I am really excited because I want to make the best piece of work I've ever done. I want to make a fine piece of craftsmanship. I want to learn as much as I can. And I really want this to be a piece of art. And so it is a sincere pleasure and honor to bring you along as ever with this journey, with this education, with all the mistakes, with the trials and the tribulations of trying to do things that are completely stupid and way out of my comfort zone because it is exciting and it is exhilarating. And I hope it helps inspire you to get out to your workshops. I hope it helps inspire you to get out and make stuff. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.